To put this picture on your television screen, a TV station uses more electronic equipment than you can shake a stick at. Each piece does a certain job. We'll see some of them in operation. To put this picture on your television screen, a TV station uses more electronic equipment than you can shake a stick at. Each piece does a certain job, and during this week we'll see some of them in operation. A piece of TV equipment is really nothing more than a tool a person can use to do a certain job. And speaking of people, you see a few of us every night, but you might be surprised to know that there are 58 people who work at Channel 5. They are engineers, advertising salesmen, producers, directors, cameramen, artists, secretaries, and managers. These 58 people do the work that keeps this station on the air and its programs on your TV screen. Our payroll alone at Channel 5 is well over a million dollars. Um, equipment is, the cost of equipment is absolutely staggering. The money to pay these people and to buy the equipment, heat the offices, and pay all the other bills comes from one source, the commercial message bought by an advertiser. Our only revenue source is advertising. The more successful the program, depending on the time of day, the more successful the program, uh, the more the per unit cost is. Per units, I'm referring to usually 30 second television spots, television commercials. Some commercials come to us already made on film or more commonly on videotape, but a lot of them are made right here in the Champlain Valley. Here's a commercial production crew out in the field. Anything outside the studio is called in the field. He's going to take it, turn it around, set it in line, we'll zoom out, then do a panel with the logo, super it on the screen, that'll be his spot. Okay, on the count of three, we'll start our action, okay? One, two, three. Once the field work is done, the producer brings the tape back home and spends more time than you'd imagine actually producing the commercial with the aid of this computer-driven editing machine. Once the commercial is done, it's transferred again to a special cartridge tape and finally put on the air. And now that we've figured out where the money comes from, we'll turn tomorrow night to one of the things the money pays for, the newsrooms in Burlington and Plattsburgh. Today, let's look at one of the things the commercials pay for, the news. Here's what you see every night for 30 minutes at 6, 30 minutes at 11, and two five-minute newscasts during the Today Show. Behind the scenes, it's a full-time job for 11 news people in New York and Vermont. The biggest job is simply staying on top of what's happening. Sources that we have are, are many. There are other news media that we listen to, read, and watch. There are press releases. There are daily phone contacts, police and fire agencies. We were listening to a, a scanner just as anybody else can listen to, and heard that there was a fire in uh, the village of Keysville. A reporter was working here in the newsroom on another story, and I asked her to leave the story she was working on and go look at the fire. This particular story is relatively easy. At a fire, for example, the reporter knows right away the who, what, where, and when. But even this easy story takes work and time, travel to the scene and back, getting the facts from a busy fire chief, and then perhaps an hour and a half on the editing bench. The editing bench is two videotape machines, two monitors, and a computer-controlled editing console which actually operates both tape machines. One machine plays back the original tape. On the other one, we build the final story step by step, scene by scene. The reporter tells the computer what to do, where to put each picture, where to put the sound, the computer rolls the tape and precisely inserts each picture to an accuracy of one thirtieth of a second. While Sharon Northrup is editing her fire, Dave Bowman and Rob Mahalik discuss the stories they will feed live today from Burlington, and the six o'clock producer, that's me, in the Plattsburgh newsroom is at the center of a whirlwind of activity. From four o'clock on, it's like battle stations on the high seas here. The same thing happens again before the eleven o'clock news. 
At this time, the nine-person production team gets into the act. Led by the director, they put the show on the air. And finally, the four people who will be on the air live get in place in front of the cameras. There are two cameras in Plattsburgh, one in Burlington. The taped stories are loaded into their tape players, and at his master control board, the director pulls it all together. And now, live from our new centers, this is Nightly News on 5. Well, now you've seen the how of it. Tomorrow, some of the whys, including why is there news from Vermont. Burlington and Plattsburgh. Monday, June 20th, 19... Now, some of our viewers tell us they don't like to see us covering news from the state of Vermont. There are three commercial television stations and two major educational television stations in the Burlington, Plattsburgh market. We're the only station in the Champlain Valley to cover the news as we do. So why do we cover the news in Vermont? Every night at 6 and 11 o'clock, three television stations in the Champlain Valley broadcast news to 184,000 people in 15 counties of New York and Vermont. The people who watch nightly news on five live in places like Plattsburgh, Peru, Lake Placid, Messina, Malone, Ticonderoga, Burlington, Montpelier, and Essex Junction, and big and little towns everywhere our signal reaches. These places and the people in them, including you, are part of our news community. A TV station as a federal licensee is required to serve the public needs and interests, and news is the most important part of that commitment. But that's only part of the reason for doing a newscast which serves 15 counties. We're here to compete in the marketplace. We recognize that there's a whole marketplace. We compete in every sense of the word for entertainment programming. And what we're saying now is for news programming, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to compete in the whole marketplace. I think that competition will make us all better. In a region like the North Country, where people are so far apart, covering the news means covering ground. To report a story from St. Lawrence County, say, is a full day's work, about four hours of which are spent in a car. But advances in technology have begun to reduce that problem. In 1981, Nightly News invested in one new piece of technology that revolutionized our ability to cover the news of the region. This microwave dish antenna in downtown Burlington is now our direct link with 11 of the 15 counties in the region. When it went into operation two years ago, our newscast took on a new look. Here's Rob Mahal. Chris, police have issued arrest warrants for two Winooski men. The suspects are still at large and may have fled For years, the area. we, we ignored the Vermonters, and the Vermonters for years have ignored us. What would the audience think tonight if suddenly NBC News made the decision to only cover half the country? We're only going to cover the western half of the country. But you Easterners, you've got to watch us. Um, America would go crazy in the East. We are not two different countries. Uh, we have two different states with a tremendous amount of similarities. The Burlington News Bureau is Channel 5's first step to a regional news program. But if the general manager has his way, it's just the first step. There will come a day in the foreseeable future where we will have news bureaus that can bring news from the outlying areas. Uh, Rutland certainly is a consideration, as is uh, the Tri-Lakes area. Malone, Messina, wherever we can see a viable need. Tomorrow night, we'll look way behind the scenes at the electronic gizmos that make all these new ideas and the old ones possible. Inside the machines, inside the electronic circuits, is the world of a special few the wizards of the engineering department. There's so much equipment here that the engineers have a full-time job keeping it working. There's no magic about this equipment. Just like your own TV set, it breaks down from time to time. And even though ours is built a little tougher, it gets a lot more use. Editing machines, for example, may be going full tilt from 8 in the morning until midnight every day. It's a rare moment that the engineering department isn't working on at least one piece of equipment. Engineers also man the main control board all the time the station is on the air. From this warm and comfortable place in the control room, the engineers also remotely operate the transmitter, which is located 17 miles away and 2,000 feet above the Champlain Valley. Terry Mountain isn't the biggest mountain in the area, but the tower on top of it is another 1,000 feet high, 
and from that height, our signal heads to your home. On the mountain, you'll also find a telephone company tower, as well as our own smaller backup tower. Channel 5 is only one of a very few stations in the country with the luxury of a backup transmitter and tower. Here also is the hub of the communication system that links WPTZ with the National Broadcasting Company and with our bureau in New England. There are three large dish antennas in there behind those windows. Two of them point back to Plattsburgh and match up with two dishes here at the studios. One dish up on the mountain, it's hidden here behind the others, points east and lines up with this one on the roof of Burlington Square. Finally, this dish points up to another one high on the tower, which picks up our NBC signal from New York. Physically, it gets uh, from NBC to Toll Test near Albany. From there, it is microwaved to a microwave site that we own at uh, Wilton, New York. From there, another microwave site that we own in Castleton, Vermont. And then a long hop from Castleton to Terry Mountain. Now, this may seem very modern to you, but as far as the network signal is concerned, that's going to change soon. We have just um, completed the construction of a pad for a satellite dish which will be arriving within the next week or 10 days and be installed. The primary purpose of which is to receive programming from various sources and eventually within the next year and a half uh, to also receive all of NBC signal via that same satellite. This is our license from the Federal Communications Commission. It says that we're responsible for everything that goes out on the air. And at Channel 5, one person is responsible for that responsibility. He's General Manager Bob Groothand. He is responsible for everything from your being insulted by a joke told by Johnny Carson, you expecting the Pope? or the way I comb my hair, or more importantly, everything and every program that we put on the air. Right now, Bob Groothand is firming up the fall lineup of programs. How does he make those decisions? Programming decisions are, are, are based on 25% um, scientific, 25% gut feeling, and 50% luck. It's, it's extremely complicated. Nobody has uh, an answer, and the person that finally has a 100% definitive answer as to this is what you should program will be an instant millionaire. The general manager has other responsibilities, too. One is to make money, a profit for the stockholders of the Rollins Corporation. Another is to present programming that makes you happy. Actually, those two are quite compatible, because if you like our programming, our ratings go up, and that makes us more valuable to our advertisers. Increased advertising dollars make improved programming, improved staff, and technical equipment to bring you more and better information and entertainment. The like any business, the sales department has the main job of getting that money. <laughs> Here it's selling commercial advertising. Men and women work for us at our main studio complex in Plattsburgh, at our offices in Burlington, and we have arrangements with sales organizations in Montreal and Toronto. There's also an 18 office network of national representatives around the country. This is commercial television. It doesn't cost you anything. What is the future of commercial television? As the business grows, as the technologies are advancing so rapidly, it is up to the individual commercial stations to focus more and more and localize more and more on issues that are of importance to people that they serve. And I'm not talking just about what the Common Council in Plattsburgh may do, but I'm talking about high school football games, I'm talking about um, issues in Malone, in um, uh, Huntington, Vermont, uh, little towns, big towns within our market area that we serve. When will we see all that happen? The answer is now. You're watching it develop every day. And that's what's happening behind the scenes at Channel 5. And that's special segment for this week. Next week on special segment... My little town blue. A small town's hope for a more prosperous future and the man who offered that hope 
now embattled and under indictment or investigation by five states and four federal agencies. Two banks have collapsed, and the lawsuits now total close to a billion dollars. Next week, John Swain, the owner of the Lake Placid Club Resort, the man who broke the banks. The result of a four-month special segment investigation, starting Monday at 6 on Nightly News. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today.